Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another Freedom and Summit. Oh my gosh, I am so excited. This summit has truly blessed me. It has been absolutely amazing, amazing. We have had phenomenal experts. Like I, I can't even, this has really blown my mind. You know, I knew that it was going to be great, but it has really far exceeded my expectations. And then tonight we have another wonderful, wonderful expert that I am so excited to introduce. Not only do I know her personally, but I am just encouraged and just wanting more to get to know her and continue to build the relationship. So tonight we have Miss Whitley on. Woo! I am so excited. I'm excited. Amazing. She is an Azusa Pacific graduate with her master's in divinity. Come on now, right? <laughs> she also is the only child and she is Jamaican mom or a woman, however y'all say that in Jamaican, right? She is amazing, amazing. And you know, her bio, I think she kind of cut some corners. You know, she talked about how she likes to speak and she likes to do this. But just for me watching her, she is truly a one. She lives what she teaches. She lives what she believes. And that is what I most, that, you know, when I was researching my, my experts, those are the things that I was looking for. I was looking for people that lived what they talked about. Because those of you that know me, my followers, you all know that I am a woman of integrity. I'm a woman of authenticity and transparency. And so I can only attract who I am. I am super, super excited to bring on this next expert. When I tell you she is hilarious, she forgot to put that in there. This girl needs to be on the big screen because she is wonderful. She is so funny, but she does everything that she does from my experience, me watching her, she does an excellence. And that is what I admire most about her. And that's why I wanted you all to meet her. So help me welcoming, help me to welcome Miss Whitley. Hey, Whitley! <laughs> I'm so excited. How are you? How are you? I'm doing absolutely wonderful. How are you? I am doing good. Uh oh, we got some crazy background noise going on, but we're gonna push through. <laughs> I need. Uh, can you tell the audience just more about yourself? Tell them more. I, you know, your your like I said, your bio does not do you justice. Give us a little bit more. Bring us into the world of Whitley. Wow. Well, first, I just want to say and give you honor for allowing me to be on here. An expert. I don't know what I'm an expert at, but I will definitely try to answer the best way that I can. Um, so one of the things that I, I guess with the bio that you're saying I didn't add enough, I'm 27 years old. I live in San Bernardino. I currently work at Azusa Pacific. I did graduate from there in May with my master's. So I'm so excited to be done. Woo -woo. Um, yes. You know what it's like to be in school and you just are excited to end, right? And so I recently got the position at Azusa once I graduated. So it was literally like a graduation in May type of thing and then a start work in June. Wow. And so we kind of all just pieced together. So I work at Azusa as a program representative and I recruit students and walk them through their admissions process. I do speak places, not as much as yourself. That's why I was like, I don't want to just be over here listing stuff. I don't want to make it seem like it's like that. But I have been kind of afforded the opportunity within church and then just people that have kind of connected with me to do more one-on-one -on -one work as well and vision boards. And so I love, love, love working with women, but I never want to leave the men out. I'm sure you have male followers as well. So I am open to speaking with them. I love just speaking into people's lives and giving them direction and language to embrace their purpose and their destiny and what they're called to do. Absolutely. That is so, so wonderful. As I was reading your bio, I remember one of the things that you have wrote is that your ultimate goal is to inspire the world, you know, to inspire people around the world. And that really touched me because that too, you know, is a desire of mine and not for my own fame or glory, but because I know that God has put something inside of me and it's my, it's my responsibility. I often tell the women that I coach, the people that, you know, are connected with me, it is our responsibility to give what God has given to us. You know, the, the story of the, the servants with the talents that has been playing in my head for the last month, you know, and, and when we have these gifts such as yourself, it is our responsibility. We cannot die with those things locked inside of us. So Whitley, tell us more 
about your passion. So I know that that's truly your passion. If you, but what is that thing? What is that thing that keeps you up at night? That thing that wakes you up in the middle of the night that you just can't shake that thing that you know sometimes I know like me there's sometimes where I'm like I'm done with this I'm giving up the speaking I'm giving up the coaching because it is a burden right it is both a burden and a blessing but what is that thing for you what is that thing that keeps Whitley up at night I, I love that you asked me that because I have been going through those sleepless nights as of recently I've really my vulnerable situation lately to go back into doing creative projects. So I look at myself as someone who has the um, method is creativity. So anything creative, you get me in front of the camera, um, you sit me down to interview someone, to do a monologue, to act, to do a play, to sing a song, anything that has a, any, a stage and a microphone connected to it, that's my method. And mm. my message is inspiration. So if it's not inspiring someone, equipping them to be their best self, equipping them and enhancing their way of thinking and their way of life, then I, I can't connect to it, right? And so those things have been driving me lately. And I kind of had given up on myself. And like you said, given up on my projects. And it's for some not invisible because I'm always on 10. I'm always on or 100 rather and sometimes when I slow myself down because I'm always so high it's not really as noticeable and, and I recently had a conversation with God and was like Whitley you need to get back I mean I used to girl I would push stuff out like people would be like are you tired do you sleep like what is the next but people would always ask me what's the next project what you got going on and I kind of gave up on that I maybe it was because I felt like there were so many people that were doing some things that I wanted to do or whatever the case is and so the Lord just recently reminded me that there's only one you Whitley so go back to doing that. And so I've been trying to go to sleep and stop and, and everything like that. I'm just like, Oh my gosh, I can't like, there's so many creative projects that I'm like releasing out now that probably have been backed up for um, maybe months. Wow. Wow. And I, I can attest to that. You know, as I said, I, I'm a watcher. So I'm a person that kind of watch us people and see if their talk lines up. One of my, one of my coaches and one of my mentors says that our tongue and our mouth and our tongue and our shoe should be going in the same direction. So I watch people, you know, and I see if what they're talking about is what they're doing. And I remember last week, I believe you posted a video on Facebook that blew my mind. And I just thought, wow, this girl has a gift. And I, it, it inspired me so that I posted in every single group that I'm attached to. I, you know, posted in my private uh, coaching, you know, I sent it out as part of my newsletter because it was so powerful. And, and like you said, I live a life to inspire and not to impress. And I see that in you. I see that it's not about the impression. It's about the inspiration that and the imp impact that you want to give to people. So I, I honor you. I honor that in you. And I just want you to continue, continue going forward. Um, I wouldn't invite anyone to, to be a part of my community if I didn't see the greatness within them. So keep going, keep going. Wow, Our next question. So I know that you, you work a lot with women and, and you want to inspire them to be their best self. How important do you feel that self-love and self-acceptance is in that process? Mm, great question. It is pivotal for, especially for myself, when speaking with women, when moving them in the direction, I can say so many things right now. I could probably give you 10 compliments off the bat, things that you've said about yourself, thought about yourself, not thought about yourself, whatever. But it means nothing if that's not something that you believe within. Mm. There's so much power in self-esteem and self-worth. And I feel like it, um, I was talking to someone the other day about you're basically giving God the finger, right? When you say, I do not love myself. Wow. You didn't feel good enough. You didn't create me the way that I feel like I need to be created. I'm too weird. I'm too different. I'm, I'm too this, I'm too that. And I find that women can make lists upon lists of what they hate about themselves, of what's not good enough. And when it comes down to it, when I say, tell me five things right now that you love about you, tell me five strong qualities. Um, I'm not sure Or there's this, um, this fear of maybe being too confident or whatever the case is. And so I, I work really hard to break that. I worked really hard to teach women that there is so much strength 
and you knowing exactly what you're called to be, that can help to defeat anxiety, depression. I mean, things that I see, this emotional mood swings, this could create stability within someone's soul and in, inside of their person, their inner being. And I think if there was more women out there that were able to really embrace and to love on themselves, then they would find themselves in situations, not only would they be able to attract what they're looking for in their lives instead of attracting what they're most afraid of. Oh man, that is so, so good. At all the, the restrooms or bathrooms in my home, I have written in red lipstick, you are enough, you know, because mm -hmm. most of us with these gifts and with these, you know, these callings on our life, the devil tries to, you know, whisper in our ear and tell us that we're not enough or you're too much, sit down, it, it's too much, it's too, you know, at, at least in my life, that has been a struggle of mine of, you know, um, stop being too cocky or stop. So I have it written in all my bathrooms that you are enough. And it's not only for me, but it's for my daughter, it's for my boys. You know, I have, it's, it's my responsibility again to teach people that they are enough and not only the good, right? So a lot of these, these thought leaders and stuff, they teach us to just accept, no, I accept all of it I accept the things that I realize I'm a mess in this area you know I'm working on it but I'm a mess and I love it and I accept right. it and I know that in order for me to grow first of all I have to accept it so many of us try to pretend like it's not there no it's there it's there but I have to love and accept it in order for me to grow all of me right so that is an excellent answer and I'm happy I'm so I'm so excited that there's another woman that is out there doing the work right because this is it, it's lonely in this space of, of um, self-help especially the right way you know we have a lot of self uh, help gurus and things like that but when when you're a call to do it like this is my ministry I've been doing this since I was five years old on the kindergarten playground right this is my ministry so Whitley, tell me about your past. You know, we all have a past. And I, I often tell, especially the teens that I work with, you know, teens get into this, this scale where they want to weigh, you know, someone's past against theirs, you know. So, for example, there may be someone that lost a pet. And that loss of that pet has caused them to completely shut down. And then you may have another person that has lost their parents and their grandparents and everyone. And, and, and a lot of times we, we want to do this, you know, this scale and say one is heavier than the other. We all have a past. Everyone has some type of baggage, something that has hurt. I think human nature, one thing that we can connect on is love and also hurt, you know, and fear. You know, those are the three things that every human has in common. Right. So not going too much into your past, but how important has it been for you to release those hurts, for you to release those, those thoughts of not being good enough or those, uh -huh. those thoughts. And, and, and for the audience, how important is it for them to release their past in order to live the life of their dreams? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All up in my business. I see, I see. <laughs> I think that for me personally, one of the, the situations that I speak on now, even more free, I, I think in 10 years, I'll, I'll find myself in a deeper freedom with this story, but I was in a relationship in college, never forget it, because it was a relationship where I was with a man who found himself being verbally abusive. At the time, I didn't know it was verbal abuse, right? But when he's calling you, you know, bleepity bleep and you're nothing and all this stuff, it was because I was in a situation with him that I shouldn't have been in, but I allowed myself to go into it because there was this emptiness and this loneliness that we want to fill. And sometimes, you know, we kind of run through that like it's not a real space or like we all get embarrassed about it, right? And so we don't want to say like, yeah, I just... I. You know, I, I just wanted to fill that void, but it really was a real space for me. Like in college, you know, sometimes you have dead time. I swear now, if I was in college, I would be on top of my game even more. But when I was then, I, I felt like I was so busy, like life and everything. And I realized that there was this space I was filling or, you know, everybody else was having sex and I, I waited a certain amount of time. And I wasn't until college when I lost my virginity. But when I did, and then after I started making the decision to be active, I feel like I lost a piece of me mm. and I, I never, I didn't know how to articulate it. So I get into this relationship with this guy and we're sexually active and I was giving myself away and I wasn't realizing that I was losing control. Wow. Right. And one day, um, you know, we were just laying there and, and I started laughing 
and he had a history of family members that were abusive. And so he had told me about that, like, yeah, because he beats his girlfriend all the time. And he had a lot of anger issues as well. And so I started laughing at something and he was like, you don't stop laughing, I'm gonna hit you. And I was like, oh, okay, all right. Well, I'm gonna stop laughing now. But I thought he was still joking. So I was laughing and he was like, you need to get out, you need to leave, right? Wow. And so even in then that moment, I didn't realize like, wow, this is going down a path I didn't want it to go. And so long story short, he ends up just completely publicly humiliating me. Um, it, it was a really, really bad situation. And what I realized was that I never wanted anyone to go through that pain again. Mm. I, I went, I, I guess I'm the same as yourself. So I've always been one to inspire those around me, especially women, one to tell them you're good enough, you're smart enough. And I think when I went through that situation, I remember those moments when I'd be sitting in my room and I was, I'd cry my eyes out, girl, I had to listen to worship music back to, I mean, I'm talking about pulling yourself out of a situation that could cause you to be suicidal, depression. It, it was just crazy for me. And I remember finding myself in moments where I was like, you have to, you have to, you have to do it. There's someone that's waiting on you. You have to keep pushing Whitley. You cannot give up. And so I took authority over my life and I did it with God. So I don't want to make it seem like I, like we said, the self-help, I just went inward. No, no, no. I went up. Yeah. And I, I, I had to go down first to go up. Right. And after that, my creativity and I did inspirational things and I pushed and I and I used it as my fuel and it was the economy that helped me to press into the next level um, even recently been through another situation kind of same kind of thing I had to push my way through and I had to say there is someone that's waiting on me and so for those watching who maybe have been through similar situations maybe actually physical abuse or even just emotional or whatever that looks like I think it's so important for you, again, you have to know your mission in life. Yes. Because if I didn't know it, it would be easy for me to give up. But when I thought about all of the women who I was supposed to tell this story to, when I thought about the lives of people that I was supposed to pour into and say, no, I think that you're on the right track. God is just leading you in this. Like, you know, when I started to really think about it, I was like, okay, I could end my life. I could give up, right? I could stop. I could just say, you know what, I'm just going to be regular smegular i'm just not gonna go after what i feel like god has called me to do and i was like i cannot do that it goes against everything in me it goes against the integrity of what i stand for and what i believe in and so i encourage every single person watching to push harder yeah. i don't care what's coming against you you could be right now in a situation where you're in a bad relationship where you have no job where you are finding yourself in the lowest place of your life but you can get past it through prayer, through constant affirmation, and you have to affirm yourself. I think I went wrong at a series of time where I felt like I needed the affirmation of people. But eventually, some people are going to be silent. Some people are not going to have anything to say. Some people, it's not going to be that season. And God will pull us to a time of isolation where we have to rest in him. And so when I rested in him, I had to, like you said, I had to do the work, girl. So I've been doing the work. And honestly, it's paying off. I feel like this is the greatest season. It was it was real rough for me. It was touch and go. But I feel like this is one of the greatest seasons of my life because I can say, "Wow, I went low. God, God humbled me." And and I think I'm, I'm I think I get it now. Yeah. I think I've. I <laughs> you that is so so good. I I often say to God, you know, in my, my moments of prayer and meditation, I got it. I got it. You know, thank you. Thank you for all these trials, you know, because my, my thing, like you said, you have learned to turn them, turn all that pain outward, you know, first go inward and then go up to God, but you were able to give it back. And, and the, what I teach my audience is we have to learn to turn our trials into treasures. You know, God gives them to us. You know, a lot of times we sit and we say, why, why? There's going to be a season where that why is going to be answered. And I believe within us, we all know the answer to it. A lot of times we want to go to this person. You know, you could have wanted to go to your ass, ex and say, why, you know, why? But you knew, the, you knew the answer. You know, before you even started talking, you knew that you had, you were empty inside. And so that's why you attracted that relationship. So I teach that. Find, answer your own why. We are responsible to answer our own why. And then once the, the answer, we have the answer, we have to turn those trials into treasures. Because I, every single thing that I've been through, I know now. And I, I, I joke often when I do my public speaking, 
that I have a treasure box full of mess. And I, you know, it's a treasure box to me. And I'm able to, when I run into the kid that has been diagnosed with anger management or ADHD, I can reach back there and say, oh, me too. You know, when I run into the woman that has been in abusive relationships, I can say me too. And I got through it, you know? So thank you, Whitley. Thank you for your transparency. You know, that's what it takes. And this season that we're in, it takes us being transparent in order for us to grow and in order for us to help others. You know, people are, it's time out for us sugarcoating things and, and playing patty cake with it. You know, if we want true breakthrough, we have to be transparent. So thank you so much. I honor your transparency. Our final question. So, and you kind of already elaborated on this a little bit. Um, what three steps, if you were to have a woman that you're talking to, what would you tell them three things that they can do today to start first, you know, self-love, releasing their past, and start really going after their passions to live the life that they know that they were created to live? What three things can they start to implement today? Okay. Um, they're not deep at all. <laughs> <laughs> Step one is, is I would definitely say developing a strong relationship with God where you not only know of him, but you really know him for yourself. I think mm -hmm. one of the things and the problems that I was um, dealing with, even in this last season, girl, I can, I can work now. You know, you see me, I can be at church. I can be doing things. I can be busy, right? Women, we can be busy. Yes. Okay, I have kids, but I'm sure I would be a great mother and wife but I would, I probably could find myself in a, a season of busyness where I'm just doing, 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 slow down, ah. be in real relationships. So if we're saying like, we don't want to talk about God, like he's not there. Right. Yes. We want to talk about him as if we know him, there's new things that he's always revealing. There's new spaces and places to go. And so for me personally, I can just say that I had to go just from a place of knowing of God and being like, okay, I mean, obviously I went to school, I got my master's and, but you don't master God. You find yourself in places and, and, and times and seasons where you're like, oh God, oh, that's what you wanted to teach me. That's what I need to learn about you, et cetera, et cetera. And so be in relationship with the Lord, like, you know, date him, find out about him, find out about yourself, find out about the idiosyncrasies that revolve around the Lord and, and what that looks like. And so that would be the first thing that I would say, because if he is your creator, if he's the person that has formed you, then you want to go to the creator and you want to ask about you being the creation. What am I supposed to be doing? Am I moving in the right direction? Am I um, overexerting myself, et cetera? Yeah. Um, second thing I would say is forgive yourself. Mm. One of the things I don't think that women do, and, and I found myself, especially like going through really traumatic situations from a breakup to family situation, whatever, is I'm actually the hardest on myself. Yes. And when you get down to the core, right, and I'm sure this has happened for you where you're having conversations with women and then you get down to, okay, well, what's really the problem? What they find themselves is, I wish I wouldn't have done this. Yes. I wish that I wouldn't have said this. I wish I did, I did, I did, I did. So forgive yourself, take some deep breaths in, celebrate more accomplishments in that forgiveness, find yourself in spaces and places where you're dealing with the real emotion and then let it go. Yes. And then the third thing I would say is you have to forgive others. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and within stress, within stress related symptoms, illnesses, forgetfulness, mood swings, instability, I find that a lot of it is because people are harboring emotions to mm. situations to trauma to um fear different things that happen and and so all these stress related emotions keep people in this state of um where they're rigid where they can't um find themselves in new seasons because they're replaying and reliving old ones where they are um, even over exerting the because they're trying to make up for what they didn't feel like they got. So it's almost like this, I need some reciprocity. So I'm in this relationship because I'm looking for healing, right? And I'm in this relationship because I need affirmation. And I'm in this because they haven't forgiven the person who really was at the core of whatever they're looking for. And so again, that then that goes and takes you all the way back to having a real relationship with God because then really your voice would be filled. So then you'd be able to forgive yourself when the situation happens and you'd be able to forgive others and then move forward. So I kind of have noticed that those are all real loops because really life is about how we react. 
yeah. our perspective to what happens to us. And so a lot of situations, like 90% of them through conversations and consistent conversations, I, I've been talking to people about this because I'm like, wow, nobody wants to get married because I just find that it's so peculiar to me. People will say like, well, I had a conversation already. I'm like, so are you telling me that, and this is again for people that are single, um, even some people I've talked to that are married. And so you're telling me that you think that every problem is going to be solved in one conversation. You think that I'm supposed to just get you. I've never met you before in my life. We just started this friendship. We just started this work relationship, whatever that is. Right. And then one conversation, boom. You're okay, right. so it really, it, it, come on. We would be lying. It <laughs> takes time. It takes conversations. It takes developing. I, my roommate, I love her to death. But we wouldn't be where we are now. We're, we're close. But it took conversation of continuous, you know what, I really, really, really meant it when I said I, I don't want any dishes in the sink. Right. You know? <laughs> so like you have to keep talking about that. You have to keep working through what that, what this makes you feel like and stuff like that. So it's, it's just constant. But I say all that to say, real relationship with God, forgive yourself and forgive others and stay in that space and stay in that vulnerability. And I, I believe that healing is your portion. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. So this is coming from the woman that says she's an expert of what, right? we see that you are definitely the expert. I see a relationship call in some type of coach or something in your life because you have definitely given some, some great tools, some tangible things that these women can take away for having a deep relationship with God, forgiving self and forgiving others. That is something that you ladies out there and gentlemen, you can start implementing today you can implement these things today and live the life that you dream about live the life that you know you were created to live whitley girl you blew it up i'm so so excited <laughs> thank you so so much oh, before you. we let you go how can we reach you how can we get in contact with you what do you have going on and how can we support you great question well i um Go by the name Whitley Porter on all of my social media platforms. So whether it's Periscope, Facebook, um, Instagram, I think the only one is, I don't really use my Twitter. So I would just say Instagram, <laughs> Facebook, and Periscope. You can find me at Whitley Porter. And I would love to hear feedback from you. You can um, just definitely comment, post. I, I'm always posting videos. I also have a YouTube channel. So find me on YouTube as well. And I look forward to the new year. I, I'm going to have some new projects rolling out, whether it be creative or um just opportunities, I think, for women to get involved. So uh, by the time this video comes out, they should be able to see some things that they can get themselves into. And so I would love, love, love to build a relationship. And I, I want to even offer services of doing some vision boards. So I know um, I hear a lot of times women are like, oh my gosh, I really would love to do a vision board. And so I am going to make myself available to do that as well. So please contact me. Um, on any one of those social media platforms. Awesome. So I all of her mm -hmm. information, you can find her on the links on the links the links so all of her contact, contact information is there. Where and how about, about email? What's your email address? Oh, email address. My email whitley.porter at gmail.com. So Whitley. there it is. It is. Super, super, super easy. Easy. <laughs> very easy. Yes. yes. As we end, As we end, 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 end any last words, words want to say to um, want to say to the Yeah, no, I, I definitely, I don't know in my heart who's watching right now, but I, I definitely feel like there's someone who may be watching and maybe feels like they're ready to give up. And, and I felt that earlier. Do not give up. And, and I feel like it's someone particularly who feels like maybe like life is over for them. Mm -hmm. And so maybe there's like some traumatic situation that kind of happened. And so I would say, um, definitely reach out to me. I'm available. I know to me, you're always available. Like this is your, your thing, but freedom, this is, this whole summit is just about being free, but before you're able to be free, you have to know what's keeping you in bondage. So mm -hmm. be real about what that issue is. We're here to help whoever this is. And, and so just be inspired and encouraged to know that we all have hit our lows. Nobody is at their perfect space. If we're rising up, there's still other things that are getting ready to come about. So it's just perspective. And so be vulnerable and be open. And I just want to say thank you so much, my sister, for having me. I am so honored and blown away that you even reached out to me. I didn't really know how to respond. So when I got the message, I was like, you must have meant to text somebody else. Um, I was really and i'm 
I mean it from the top of my heart because they say the bottom is dirty. So from the top, the cleanest part of my heart, I thank you for this. It's, it was a refueling and it probably helped amp me up more than you know. So thank you so much. Oh, I am. It is totally, totally my pleasure. And just to reiterate what Whitley has said, you know, don't look at us and think that we're at the top. And if we are two steps behind you or up above you, it is our responsibility to make sure that we are, as we are climbing, we are also lifting. That is our responsibility. So please, please, hey, trust me, if you are a part of my community, I would not be offended if you feel connected to Whitley and you want to reach out to her. Again, all of her contact information will be in the links below. Reach out, reach out. This is a woman of God with a prophetic gift. So I know that her word, she's prophesied over me. So I know it's, it's real. <laughs> so I know that it's true. So whoever you are, please, please reach out to us. We have been where you are and it is our, just our, our goal for you to be healthy and whole and most importantly, free. I love you all so very much and I wish you many, many blessings until the next summit. Bye-bye.